Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Poor House Trivia Online. You've made it here. It's Friday night. Start out the weekend with a little trivia fun, right? And we have a special game for you tonight. Um, brought to you by Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library in uh, Waynesboro. So we thank them and we would love to invite all of you to support them uh, I got a quick video I'm going to play from Kate. I believe I saw Kate in chat there. There she is. Um, so I'm going to play this clip very quickly, and then we'll get on with the game. So please take a moment and hear what they have to say, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, get on with the game here in just a second. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Benchoff, Vice President of the Board of Trustees of the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Welcome to my home office, where I'm playing trivia from with you all tonight. From the first time I played trivia with Poor House, I knew it would be a perfect fit for a library fundraiser. Because if there's one thing library supporters and trivia players have in common, it's a love of knowledge. The Waynesboro Library is not just a repository of books. It's a hub where all people of all walks of life come to learn something. Some of us come to learn from books and the worlds they open up for us. Others of us come to learn how to write a resume or to use a 3D printer to arrange flowers or even to philosophize in the Socrates Cafe. Maybe most importantly, the library is a place where we gather as a part of something bigger than ourselves, a place whose doors are always open to everyone, a place where we find our real and fictional neighbors and friends, and where we leave a little better than we arrived. The library depends on the generous support of the community. Only 64% of our operating budget is covered by state and local funding. The rest comes from people like you. Please consider making a donation and know that your donation reflects your love of knowledge and commitment to providing these resources to the community. But it doesn't mean you'll win at trivia. So good luck. All right. So, uh, yes, if you enjoy the game tonight and um, you would like to donate, you can do so in one of two ways. I'll show you along the way, but they are always right down there in the bottom under the bar. Uh, there's a URL you can go directly to, or you can take your camera, turn the camera on on your camera, and just aim it at the QR code there, and it will automatically, magically take you to that website. Uh, and then I believe if you scroll down a little bit, there's some tipping options. So um, they do great work there, and we hope that you consider supporting their, uh, their efforts uh, sometime tonight during the game. Uh, also, a free way to support our efforts at uh, Poor House Trivia is to subscribe. It's totally free. Uh, if you like trivia, uh, we do a game once a week online for the world, 7 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. So if you want to hear about that, if you like trivia, if you find out you find yourself enjoying tonight's game, we do a very similar game every Wednesday night. Uh, call your friends, your family, get a team together, compete against teams from all over the place. Uh, you just hit subscribe there on YouTube. There'll be a bell. You just hit the bell and hit all notifications. So whenever we do something online, you will get notified. Uh, and it's good, right? It's good to be notified because then you can either choose, then you can swipe right or swipe left, right? So there you go. At least you're notified. All right. So let's get started on how to play. I know there's a number of new players uh, possibly out there. Uh, so the way you play tonight uh, is two ways. One, you can just sit back and have a good time. You can sit back, have a good, well, you can do anyway to have it. Hopefully you have a good time either way. But if you just sit back, have a good time, no rules, scream answers, make it a push-up contest, a drinking game, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Good to go. Uh, if you do, however, want to uh, compete in the Poor House Trivia scoring format, you can do that in one of two ways. One is to sign in uh, your team using that URL. We use a Google form. Or I also see a lot of you signing up in chat, which is fine too. It's very, it's sort of informal the scoring, but what we'll do at the end, we will get a winner. Uh, so maybe I'll just ask you to submit your team name in chat with your score if you don't want to use the Google form uh, like we do on the Wednesday night game. Usually we do that when we have a few hundred people um, in. So if we get up to those kind of numbers, maybe we'll switch to the Google form. But in chat is fine. So far I see Sweet Baby James. Uh, we got the McBenchoffs. We've got uh, Lita's. Is that Ilta's Peaches? Um, what's up, Sean Mayer? It's my buddy. <laughs> uh, looks like we have Molars for the win. Uh, we got Chuck Norris too. Electric Boogaloo. Rick James Beach Gods. Um, Big Brother here. Big Brother Twenty One. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you want to play, sign in your team name. There'll be a few times during the game I'll ask you to submit your scores, and we'll go from there. Um, so one thing you do want to do is you want to go to poorhousetrivia.com if you've not done so already and download uh, or just open that poorhousetrivia.com. Open that interactive score sheet. It's at the very bottom. It's called the interactive score sheet, okay? Um, what you want to do optimally is right-click it, download it to your computer, and then open it with an Adobe product. That way you can ensure that it is 100% functional. We don't have any bugs in it if you do that. If you just left click and open it in your browser, it probably will work, but there's a chance it won't, and it gets buggy if you just do that. But 100% sure, right click interactive score sheet, download it to your computer, open that file with an Adobe product, and then you can, uh, then you can ensure the functionality. Once you do that, it looks like this right here. And that was designed by our own Sean Mayer. He was he, Sean Marr. He is in the audience right now. Looks like Sean's playing. What's up, Sean? I haven't seen you in a minute. I hope you're doing well, my friend. <laughs> Sean designed this interactive score sheet uh, and is a former Poor House Trivia host and uh, still a Poor House Trivia player. So, um, Consider um, taking a look at his work over there at Attic Light Studios. And, um, oh, he had a baby. Awesome. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> All right, here's how you play, everybody. There's going to be four rounds tonight with five questions in each round. I'm going to ask them. You're going to answer them. And then you will write your answer. Team, one, every team should have a team captain. Somebody is the um, type stuff in, corrals the final answers, organizes. Whoever that person is, if it's you, Sweet. So I'll ask a question. You'll write it in the answer spot. And then what you want to do is you want to click a wager. One, three, five, seven, or nine, you'll see on there. And that's basically just a confidence level. So if you're very confident, you want to wager high. If you don't know it, you want to wager low. And you can only use each number once in the round. So you can't just spam nine or any other number more than once. Okay? So there's five questions, five wagers. I'll ask them. You answer them. And then you click a wager. Let's do a quick example. So if I said, for your wager, who's the first president of the United States? You would talk with your team. You guys would be confident with George Washington. You'd write George Washington in and probably click nine. If the question was, however, um, what year was George Washington born? Uh, maybe somebody knows that, in which case you're very confident. But if you're just guessing, you might want to write a year and then just maybe wager one as a guess. All right. And then again, you can't, whatever you wager, you can't use it again in the same round. All right, that's basically it. Four rounds, five questions I ask you answer. Answer, wager, golden. There's a couple other things you'll see on there. I will go over those as they come up in the game. First things first, everybody write your uh, these categories down on the sh score sheet. It says uh, round one categories. You wanna write these down. Library grab bag, uh, spacing out, three clues, one word, U.S. Geography, and Disney characters. All right, so write these down in the spaces in round one where it says categories. And here's your first job, first task as a team. Talk about what you think your favorite category is among those five, your best category. And then you click the little plus five next to it on your answer sheet. If you get that question correct, you'll get five bonus points added to your score in addition to all the other points you earn in the game, in the round. All right, so I'll give you about 30, 40 seconds to decide one category, click the plus five, and we'll get this show on the road. All right, y'all, go ahead and click one category you think is your favorite uh, for plus five there. And we will go ahead and get started. All right, so good luck. I want to remind everybody that tonight's game is honor system. It's all honor system. So no Googling answers, no technology except for your brain and your teammate's brain. 
Also, no cheating in any other ways. You can't change your answers once I read them. No change. None of that shenanigans, right? Have some fun with it. Uh, if you uh, get the urge to do something like that, well, um, choose your your wiser mind. <laughs> let let you know plays with some integrity and have some fun. It's all honor system for a good cause to help the uh, Waynesboro Library out. And again, please consider subscribing not to our channel and please consider uh, donating to. Uh, help their efforts over there at the library. Again, you can do that by uh, going to the URL that's right down there or clicking, uh, going to the um, QR code. Okay, up. Good luck, everybody. Here you go. First question. Of Pope Francis, J. Edgar Hoover, Lewis Carroll, or Madeleine Langle, which did not work as a librarian in their life? Three of them were librarians at some point. One of them was never a library. Which one was it? All right, once again, of Pope Francis, J. Edgar Hoover, Lewis Carroll, or Madeleine Langle, which did not work as a librarian in their life at any point, never was a librarian. Three of them were at some point. One of them was never. Which one was it? You got 30 seconds. Jaws Whedon says the librarian libertines are in the game. So we've, looks like we got about 10 or 12 teams in. All right, y'all, lock it in. Answer we're looking for. Nice job if you came out of the gate with it. The only one that was never a librarian was Pope Francis. Never a librarian, Pope Francis was not. All right, moving on to question two. Spacing out. This artificial satellite was developed as a multinational project between the space agencies of the US, Russia, Japan, Europe, and Canada, and is very commonly known by the initials ISS. For you, Wager, what did the letters ISS stand for in this instance? And for a two point bonus, what US president initially conceived this idea? So, some questions, if you're new to our game, will have a two point bonus opportunity, like this one, in which case you answered your regular answer and your two point bonus answer. And if you get your two point bonus answer correct, you'll just click the plus two over there on the interactive score sheet. Again, this artificial satellite was developed as a multinational project between the space agencies of the United States, Russia, Japan, Europe, and Canada, and is very commonly known by the initials ISS. For you, Wager, what did the letters ISS stand for in this instance? And for a two-point bonus, what U.S. president initially conceived the idea? I'll give you 20 seconds.
All right, y'all, lock it in. Here we go. The first part, ISS. Maybe we, uh, the answer we're talking about there is the International Space Station. And the bonus is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan with a two point bonus. If you got Ronald Reagan, click your plus two. I should mention if you ever get a question wrong, make sure you click the X, of course, so that the uh, doesn't add it in. All right, three clues. This should be called three clues, one word. Oh, uh, not three clues, one battle. Three clues, one word. For this question, I'm going to give you three clues. All lead you to one word, okay? And I will posit two clues, though. And if you would like to go for it, there you can for a two-point bonus. The only hook is you can only guess once. So if you guess it for the two-point bonus, you can't guess again. Uh, three clues, one word. Clue one, the act of an aquatic mammal leaping out of the water. Finally, I corrected it apparently on the third slide. <laughs> uh, clue two, with a slightly altered spelling, it refers to a birth in which the infant is delivered feet first. You got 30 seconds if you wanna go for it now. You don't have to, you can wait. I got another clue coming. All right, there you go. One one last chance. We're gonna go for for a two point bonus. It's going once, going twice. It's gone. Clue three: the violation of the terms of a legal contract. Give you twenty seconds on this one. This is for your wager. No more two point bonuses. Killer snails are playing tonight. All right, y'all, lock it in. Three clues, one word. The answer we're looking for is breach. Breach. Breach of contract. All right, y'all. Question four is U.S. geography. Of the five permanently inhabited U.S. territories, this 76-mile territory in the South Pacific Ocean comes first alphabetically. For your wager, name this territory with a postal code of A.S. Once again, of the five permanently inhabited U.S. territories, this 76-mile territory in the South Pacific Ocean comes first alphabetically. Name it with a postal code of AS. 20 seconds. <clears throat> All 
All right, y'all, lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. The answer we're looking for. Sorry, I'm moving that uh, um, Alexander Hamilton Memorial Library sign down there. Again, tonight's game is sponsored by them, and we are doing a fundraiser for them. Please consider, subs uh, keep saying subscribe, donating to their cause. As Kate mentioned in her video, 64% uh, of their annual funding comes from uh, the government. The other third or so comes from... Um, Folks like us and you. So please consider helping uh, their cause and their work and their efforts. You can go to the URL that's be there on the thing, all game, as well as the QR code. All right, the answer we're looking for is the American Samoa. Yes, it is, American Samoa. Final question. In this 1950 Disney film, the title character befriends two talking mice after she rescues them from a trap set by an evil cat named Lucifer. If you wager your name this character, two point bonus, give me the names of either one of the two mice, but you may only guess once for the mice. Good luck. What's up, quarantine dragon fan Tim's in the house. Good to see you, buddy. Again, in this 1950 Disney film, the title character befriends two talking mice after she rescues them from a trap set by an evil cat named Lucifer. What is your name, the character? Two points. Name either of the mice. You can only guess at one. 20 seconds. All right, y'all, the answer, Disney, the Disney character we're looking for, Disney princess, Cinderella. And the bonus is Jacques and Gus. We also, uh, Jack, Jacques, Gus, or Octavius, we accept. So if you got any of those, you are good to go. That category is definitely not college conferences. Apparently, when I cut and paste today, I've... <laughs> I didn't do it. All right, once again, everybody, um, tonight's game, if you're just tuning in, is brought to you by Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library, and uh, a good portion of their funding comes from events and fundraising like this and from kind folks like yourself. So please consider donating to their cause, helping them out. They provide a wonderful service, a library service, which provides us knowledge, provides us trivia. I'm sure the answer to every one of the questions that I will ask tonight are somewhere in that library. <laughs> uh, so please, you can go to their URL there, uh, or you can turn your camera on or your phone and just go to the QR code there. Uh, the exact same things are below down there as well. So either way, um, you want to do it is all good. Here are your round two categories, though. Song lyrics, I want my MTV. Time for some dessert. Occupational nicknames and NFL teams. Do the same thing you did in the first half. Pick your favorite category, click the plus five, and you're good to go. I think we'll just use the chat tonight for scoring. So when I uh, ask you to submit your scores, you can just submit them and I'll just do a visual and we'll see who wins uh, cause I don't, if I can look at just 10 or 15 teams, I can do it with my eyes, but if it's 50 or 60, that's when I need the Google forms. I think the jinx cam might be up tonight. Jinxy, I think is rolling around. No, that's not him.
<laughs> Let's see if the Jinx cam's on tonight or not. There he is. That's my uh that's my PIC, my partner, my should my PIT, my partner in trivia, our good buddy, Lil Stank, otherwise known as Jinx. <laughs> good luck, everybody. Round two kicks off with song lyrics. We'll check in with Jinx here in just a little bit. He tends to upstage me with those side eyes, those epic side eyes. <laughs> All right. Song lyrics, my friends. Here we go. The tide is high, but I'm holding on. I'm going to be your number one is the opening lyric to a song recorded in 1980 by what American rock band whose lead singer was certainly characterized by the band's name. For a two-point bonus, what is the singer's real first and last name? Again, the tide is high, but I'm holding on. I'm going to be your number one. Is the opening lyric to a song recorded in 1980 by what American rock band, whose lead singer was certainly characterized by the band's name? Two point bonus what's the singer's real first and last name? 23 seconds. All right, y'all. The tide is high, but I'm moving on. Hold, but holding on. I'm going to be your number one. That is Blondie. Blondie. And the two-point bonus is Debbie Harry. Deborah Harry uh, is your two-point bonus. Nice work if you got that. Speaking of music, ever since the first MTV Video Music Awards were given out in 1984, the physical awards have depicted a person of what kind of occupation holding a flagpole with an MTV flag on it. Name that occupation for your wager. Once again, speaking of music, ever since the first MTV Video Music Awards were given out in 1984, the physical awards have depicted a person of what kind of occupation holding a flagpole with an MTV flag on it? Name that occupation for your wager. 25 seconds. All right, let's do it. MTV fans, this is back um, in the day, but it is an astronaut, the moon man. The MTV moon man, astronaut, there you go, is your answer. Classic, classic photo right there. That's back in my day, my heyday. All right, y'all. Uh, 
So this question is dessert. It's potentially a crossword style question. We don't do a lot of these, but they're fun. I like them. But you can earn a two point bonus if you don't need no stinking crossword, right? Um, in other words, if you just get the answer based on uh, the clue, you're a boss. You just you don't even need a crossword. You get two point bonus for that. Stemming from the Italian word amacare, what which means to crush or beat. This meringue-like cookie has a recipe which typically calls for egg whites, sugar, and a seed or nut. Be you your name it. You got 30 seconds for a two-point bonus, and then I will give you a crossword-style hint for this. All right, y'all, if you want to go for that now, you got one, you got two, you got three. No more two-point bonus. Here's the crossword clue. It's eight letters, and the eighth letter is an N, as in nincompoop, or um, Nancy, or Notorious. Stemming from the Italian word amacare, which means to crush or beat this meringue like cookie has a recipe that typically calls for egg whites, sugar and a seed or nut. Name it. Eight letters. The eighth letter is an N. 18 seconds. All right, let's do it. The answer. Nice work. If you said macaroon, macaroon, those do look good. Those do look good right there. All right, four question is nicknames. This two word nickname was sometimes given to hospital volunteers due to the design of the red and white garments they wore during their time at work. For your wager, identify this sweet sounding nickname. Again, this two-word nickname was sometimes given to hospital volunteers due to the design of the red and white garments they wore during their time at work. For your wager, identify this sweet-sounding nickname. 20 seconds.
All right. Lock it in. Let's see what we got. Answer we're looking for is candy stripe. Candy stripes. All right. Question five is NFL teams winning their most recent championships in 2008 and 2018, respectively. These two NFL teams are tied for the most Super Bowl victories with six apiece. Name either team for you. Wager two points for both. All right, once again, winning their most recent championships in 2008 and 18, respectively. These two NFL teams are tied for the most Super Bowl victories with six apiece. We wager name either team two points for both. All right, lock it in, my friends. Here it is. The answer is one of those two teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. There you go. If you got either one of those, you are good. If you got two points for both of those, uh, if you got both of those, you got two points bonus. All right, that brings us to the end of round two. If you want to check and see um, if you got everything scored correctly, make sure you use the wagers once and only once. Make sure if you click a plus five, you only got one of those clicked. And any two-point bonuses, certainly make sure you got those. Uh, someone had mentioned a question about the macaroons. Um, the ones, they they can be called mac... I don't know how to pronounce it, but I guess macarons as well. But they are... All, macarons are... Uh, French macaroons and then uh, the their other kind of macaroons but the one that was described in the question that uh, the macaroon word stems from the amakari word and um, if you put macaron and you know you just know your macarons <laughs> it's this it, it's it's also a French macaroon so um, either one is correct I guess if you want to but it, it wasn't seven it wasn't eight letters so Obviously, if you put a macaron before I gave you eight letters, you certainly can accept that because it's also a French macaroon. Anyways, you say macaron, I say macaroon. We do private parties. If you didn't know, hit us up, whorehousetrivia.com. Put something together for you. Fundraisers like tonight for the Alexander Hamilton uh, Memorial Free Library. Please consider if you're having a fun time tonight, uh, donate to their cause you can do so with the qr code down there or the url um and um yes if you have something you want to hit us up for personal party private team building corporate funk whatever hit us up poorhousetrivia.com we'll put it together for you all right megan says those are two different types of cookie the picture was macarons but the answer was correct no but but the picture was a macaron and a French macaroon are synonymous. 
I could be wrong. I'll check in the meantime, but a macaron and a French macaroon uh, are synonymous, but I'll check either way. Either one's counts prior to the uh, thing, but I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, and we're going to go to the picture round. Name these occupational films pictured below. Now, here's how you do this. You get one point a piece for each of these. They'll scroll through. Name the occupational films you see featured here. I'm going to turn the camera off. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Have fun. All right, y'all, go ahead and give yourself one point apiece for all correct answers. I'll give you another 45 seconds or so to uh, make your final commitments on there. I've been looking up that uh, macaroon macaron thing too, Megan. Uh, it looks, uh, every website I see says something different, so I don't even think uh, the world knows, but it looks like you... Um, you're probably correct, I think, as far as the macaron. But I'm now I'm now I'm craving, now I'm craving a macaron. That's the way my mind works. I get to thinking about something like that, and now I want a macaron, <laughs> or maybe a macaron. I don't know what I want. Either way, give yourself credit if you put either one of those answers macaron or macaroon all right give you about five more seconds y'all lock in the final answers here on these occupational films and we'll go over them right here we go one point apiece anchorman the wrestler Dead Poet Society, The Nutty Professor, The Bodyguard, The Water Boy, Dr. Doolittle, Nurse Betty, Judge Dredd, and Bad Teacher. So go ahead and give yourself one point apiece for those. On your score sheet, you'll see a drop down menu that goes up to 10. So go ahead and plug that into your score sheet. And now if you want to go ahead, we'll do a halftime submission. The scores probably aren't separated by too far at this point. Um, but go ahead and submit your score with your team name. Make sure you write your team name in there. Um, team name and your score. Your score is all the way at the bottom of your interactive score sheet. Uh, we'll do a quick check-in, and we'll see how the scores look so far. Let's go ahead and check in with Stinky Jinky. What do you think, Stink? Oh, he's gone now. 
No, he's not. Oh, no, he's right up in front. I couldn't even see that's his face. <laughs> What's up, Stank? Yes, indeedy. That's my dog. <laughs> Crazy dog. All right, we got scores rolling in, my friend. Sweet Baby James, seven, 66. Half Nelson, 73. Looks like that's first so far. Muller's for the win, 68. Uh, Rick James, 77. Killer Snails, 79. That is first right now. No, it's not. Smarty Pants is in first at 81 points. Uh, McBenchoff's 73. Big Brother, 2169. Team Chuck Norris, Electric Boogaloo, 64. I don't know what the highest possible is right now. I guess it's 25 is 25 is 50, 60, 70. And how many, uh, I guess the highest right now is what, 82? Is that the highest possible right now? It's just some quick math in my noggin. Halftime total 78 for Craig Gorzelski. Do you have a team name, Craig Gorzelski? Uh, Matthew Cheney, all about the BS, says uh, they have 78. It's a, it's a Peaches, 70. Big Brother, 21, 78. Blown, blown, oh, blown Britches, uh, 75. And uh, the highest possible is 82. First place right now is 81 points. So there you go. Still a close game. Good game. We're going to go on to round number three categories. Here you go. Science fiction films. Periodicals. I'm sure that's a section in the library, isn't it, Kate? <laughs> Baseball feats. Art that I cannot afford. Maybe you can afford it. I can't afford the art that this question is about. And then finally, we got triple 50-50 here. Kitty, kitty, kitty. All right, Matthew says it's I meant bees like bees. I got it. I like all about the BS. <laughs> all right, y'all lock in there. Let me get let Stinky Jinky go back to sleep, and we're going to go ahead and kick off round number three. Your wagers reset again, so you can use them all once again. I wish everybody good luck. Here we go. And Science Fiction Films kicks it off. 2016 was the most recent calendar year, which saw the release of feature films in both Star Wars and Star Trek franchises. For your wager name, I, name the title to either one of those films, and two points for both. Once again, 2016 was the most recent calendar year, which saw the release of feature films in both Star Wars and Star Trek franchises. Be you your name either title in either of those films. Uh, I'll be the rose either of those films. Two points if you can get both, and I'll give you 24 seconds to do it.
All right, y'all, lock it in. Here are your answers. Either for your wager, two points for both, and they look like this. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and Star Trek Beyond. Two points if you got both of those correct. Beyond and Rogue One. All right, that brings us to question number two. Periodicals. With the recent decline in traditional magazine subscriptions, this magazine included as an insert with Sunday newspapers is now the most widely read magazine in the United States with a circulation of 32 million. For your wager, identify the six letter name of the magazine. Once again, with the recent decline in traditional magazine subscriptions, this magazine included as an insert with Sunday newspapers is now the most widely read magazine in the world. Oh, sorry, in the United States with a circulation of 32 million. If you wager, identify the six letter name of the magazine. 22 seconds. All right, periodicals, six letter name. Did you get it? You did if you said parade is your answer, parade. All right, Major League Baseball is question three. This remarkable feat has only been accomplished 23 times in the history of Major League Baseball. According to most baseball experts, the most notable of these occurrences took place during Game 5 of the 1956 World Series. Be aware your name that feat. Two-point bonus, what Seattle Mariner accomplished this feat most recently, doing it in August of 2012. This remarkable feat has only been accomplished 23 times in MLB history. Uh, according to most baseball experts, the most notable of these occurrences took place during the Game 5 of the 1956 World Series. Uh, for your wager name, the feat, two points bonus, what Seattle Mariner accomplished that feat most recently during uh, doing so in August of 2012. 20 seconds. Got your quarantine back, Dragon Fan Tim. Good seeing you, my friend. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. All right, baseball fans, that accomplishment is known as a perfect game. A no-hitter is not correct. 
And the bonus is Felix Hernandez. Felix Hernandez. We got that. You're a sports trivia buff. There you go. Perfect game. Felix Hernandez for the two point bonus. Art that I can't afford. Sold in 2014 for $44.4 million. The 1932 painting Jimson Weed White Flower Number One by this artist is the most expensive painting by a woman ever sold. For you, Wager, name that artist. Again, sold in 2014 for $44.4 million. The 1932 painting Jimson Weed slash White Flower Number One by this artist is the most expensive painting by a woman ever sold. Be wager your name that artist. 20 seconds. All right, lock it in, my friends. Lock it in. $44.4 million sold in 2014. The buyer is actually in the game tonight, from what I understand. Sean Marr is the owner. Dropped a mere $44.4 million out of his own piggy bank to buy him some art. Sean Props to you, my friend. I'd love to see a picture of that thing. <laughs> Just a minor setback, 44.4 milli, I'm sure. Uh, either way, though, the artist we're looking for is Georgia O'Keeffe. And there's the painting. Um, let's not go there. Yeah, I want to see the picture of this painting. Uh, nope, I want to see the picture. There it is. That is 44.4 million. Hanging on Sean Mars uh, right above his fireplace. Right on the mantle. There he is. <laughs> I'm going to have to come over and see it again, my friend. Yeah. All right. Question four. Triple 50, 50 kitty cats. It's a three-part question. Uh, here's how it works. I'm going to give you three parts. All about cats in some way or the other. Uh, they all have 50, 50 answers. You got uh, two correct for your wager. All three for two points. In nature, are cats diurnal? Meaning they are active during the day. Or crepuscular? meaning they are active during twilight. Diurnal or crepuscular? Question two. Due to genetics, calico cats are almost always female or always male. And number three. On each side of their head, do cats have three rows or four rows of whiskers? You need to get two of those questions correct to earn your wager. If you get all three, you get a plus two bonus. Once again, in nature, are cats diurnal, meaning they are active during the day, or are they crepuscular, meaning they are active during twilight hours? Number two, due to genetics, calico cats 
are almost always female or male. And number two, on the each side of their head, do cats have three rows or four rows of whiskers? Two points if you can get all three of those. Got about 15 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. You need two of these correct for your wager. All three for two points bonus. Number one, cats are crepuscular. Crepuscular, act during twilight hours. Uh, number two, the majority of calico cats are female. Who to thunk? And four rows of whiskers. Four rows of whiskers on the cats. All right, that brings us to uh, round number four coming up in just a minute. But just a reminder, tonight's game brought to you by Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Right there is their logo. Right there is their donation information. As Kate said in her video in the beginning, uh, about two-thirds of their funding comes from government, but uh, an entire third of it uh, comes from you uh, and folks like you. So uh, please... If you're enjoying the game uh, and you enjoy knowledge, that's what they are disseminators of. Uh, in fact, holders of, right? All the libraries. So they do great work over there. Please consider going to either their URL, ahmfl.org slash trivia, or just turn your camera on on your phone and aim it at the QR code. It'll take you to a donation page where you can support their efforts and their endeavors and it will help the team and the library and the books and the knowledge and in effect helps the world right um so yes we hope that you consider doing that uh if you do like trivia on our end we do a stream every wednesday night 7 p.m eastern time if you like what you see here tonight uh the wednesday night game is pretty darn similar um and you can uh bring your friends family zoom with them and play with us and every wednesday night 7 p.m eastern uh, we do this type of stream. Tonight's game is a special event brought to you by Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. So, uh, before we start round four, though, if you're new to the game, we do a game called a 642. You don't wager on this. There's no wagers right here. Your wager is actually built in and is depending on when you answer. Okay, so the six point clue is harder. Four is medium, two is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, you can only guess it one though. So if you guess it six and miss it, you can't guess again. Okay, up to you when you want to go for it. Six point clue. I am an entertainer once voted as the fifth greatest U.S. stand-up comedian of all time. My feature film debut came in a 1987 action comedy as a character simply named, simply credited as Playboy Mansion Valet. If you want to go for it for now for six points, you have 30 seconds. You don't have to. The four-point clue will bring you more information. All right, y'all, six point clues going once, going twice, it's gone. Four point clue. In 1990, I landed a role in the cast of Saturday Night Live where my most popular recurring character was the talk show host, Nat X. Gonna go for it now, it's worth four points and you have 30 seconds. All right, four point clues going once, going twice, it's gone. Two point clue, 
My last name can be found in the names of other celebrities like Dwayne the Blank Johnson and Kid Blank and Blank Hudson. I'll give you 20 seconds on that. We gave you enough blank hints. All right, nice job. If you got it on six, chat brags are open. If you got it on six, type in there. Let me know. Brag in chat. It is, uh, in fact, Chris Rock is your answer. Chris Rock. All right, that brings us to round four. Your categories will be TV spinoffs, mythology, Harry Potter, ad characters, and toys and games. Go ahead, pick your favorite category, click the plus five, and we will carry on with round number four. All right, make your conclusions. Click that plus five. Wish everybody good luck. Final round kicks off with TV spinoffs. Three part question. I'm going to name three different TV series. In each case, name the other show from which it was spun off. You need two fee wager, all three for two points. Mork and Mindy spun off from what? Go Diego, go. Spun off from what? And young Sheldon spun off from what? Again, you're telling me what these shows spun off from. Mork and Mindy, Go Diego Go, and Young Sheldon. They spun off from what shows? You have 23 seconds. All right, here we go. Answers. Mork and Mindy spun off from Happy Days. Uh, number two was Dora the Explorer. And number three is The Big Bang Theory. All right, if you get all three of those, give yourself plus two. And mythology is number two. While the Greek and Roman gods, Hypnos and Somnus, have lent their names to numerous English words, they are most closely associated with this word. In fact, the Greek word hypnos is translated to English as your answer. Name it. Again, while the Greek and Roman gods, Hypnos and Somnus, uh, 
have lent their names to numerous English words. They are most closely associated with this word. In fact, the Greek word hypnos is translated to English as your answer. Name it. 20 seconds. All right, let's see what we got. Mythology, hypnos, somnus. Uh, hypnos in Greek means sleep. That's what it is, sleep. There you go. All right, Harry Potter. Often shortened to DADA, this class at Hogwarts was has an extraordinarily high turnover of staff members. Throughout the Harry Potter novel series, no teacher retains the post for more than one school year. Be you your name the subject. Two point bonus, what is the name of the professor who teaches that course during Harry's first year at Hogwarts? Again, often shortened to DADA, this class at Hogwarts has an extraordinarily high turnover for staff members. Throughout the Harry Potter no novel series, no teacher retains the post for more than one school year. If we wager name the subject, two point bonus, what's the name of the professor who teaches the course during Harry's first year at Hogwarts? 22 seconds. All right, y'all, the answer, D-A-D-A. -A. Um, that is the class known as Defense Against the Dark Arts. Defense Against the Dark Arts. And the bonus is Professor, uh, pardon me, Harry Potter fans. Is it Quirrell? Quirrell? I don't think I've ever heard it. I don't think I've read it, but I don't know that I know. I don't, not confident in my pronunciation. Quirrell or Quirrell? Let me know, Harry Potter fans. I know you know. Let me know in chat. But there you go. If you got it, two points bonus if you got the professor. Defense against the dark arts. All right. Ad characters is question four. While she was also featured in an ad for Geico and the film Legally Blonde 2, Gidget was the real name of the dog most famously known as the ad mascot for this fast food chain. For your wager, name that fast food chain. Once again, while she was also featured in an ad for Geico and the film Legally Blonde 2, Gidget was the real name of the dog most famously known as the ad mascot for this fast food chain. Name that chain for your wager, 20 seconds.
All right, everybody, here we go. Gidget. Gidget is the ad mascot for Taco Bell. Taco Bell is your answer. That was our hint of the day, too. If you're uh, on Facebook, hit us up at Poor House Trivia, P-O-U-R, and uh, be our friend. We put a hint up on Facebook every day that we do a game. And if you go to poorhousetrivia.com and sign up for our email newsletter, we do a hint there as well. Final question, round number four. In the regular Milton Bradley version of the game Battleship, this type of vessel requires five hits in order to be sunk more than any other piece on the board. For your wager name, that vessel. Two-point bonus, how many total hits are needed in order for a player to win the game? That answer must be exact. Again, in the regular Milton Bradley version of the game Battleship, this type of vessel requires five hits in order to be sunk, more than any other piece on the board. For your wager, name that vessel, and for a two-point bonus, how many total hits are needed in order for a player to win the game, and it must be exact, 20 seconds. All right, everybody, here we go. Toys and games, it is five hits to sink the aircraft carrier. Five hits, and the total is 17. 17, five, four, three, three, and two. Nice job if you got that correct. I'm an electronic battleship fan myself. Back in the day, got the sound effects. Loved it. That's the end of round four, y'all. We got one final question coming up. I'll explain how that works in a moment, but we're not using the Google Forms. Go ahead, submit your scores now prior to the final. Team name, please, and your score. Team name and score, I'll read them out. We'll get a little visual in the chat here, in the YouTube chat, and then we'll go and do the final question. In the meantime, while the scores are coming in, once again, Waynesboro Library the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Thank you so much for sponsoring the game. We hope that you out there have enjoyed the game and consider donating uh, to the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Uh, you can do so by going to their URL there or by turning your camera on and going to the QR code. Uh, anything helps, um, and they rely on uh, folks like yourself to support their efforts uh, and they do wonderful work up there at Waynesboro Library. And uh, yes, so please consider donating to that. All right, let's see how we got here. We've got Half Nelson's at 147, McBenchoff 132, Rick James 134, Smarty Pants is in first, tied with Killer Snails at 144. We've got Blown Bridge is 140. Sweet Baby James, 129. Molars for the win at 121. So it looks like first place right now is Half Nelson's at 147. And we have a tie for second at 144. Uh-oh, we have a tie for first at All About the Bees at 147. Chuck Norris, two electric boogaloo is 124. Big Brother 21 is at 138. So it's a close game. It's anybody's game, y'all. Here's how the final question works. You can wager up to 12 points on this. At the bottom of your score sheet, you'll see zero to 12. You can wager zero. You can wager 12, anything up to 12. If you get it right, you earn the points. If you get it wrong, though, 
you lose points on this question. So it could be a 24 point swing on this question. All right. But you must lock in that wager right now. You have 30 seconds in the category. Should you choose to accept it is American business. Decide what you like to wager from zero to 12. You must lock in that wager before the question on this one. Okay. You cannot change your wager once I begin reading. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to lock in a wager in American business. All right, y'all, last call. Decide on a wager in American business and based on the scores there in chat and YouTube, kind of strategize if you like. I'll read the question in just a second. All right, good luck, everybody. Here we go, American business. On a list of the world's largest employers as measured by the number of worldwide employees, the top three American employers are a division of the United States government, a retail corporation, and a fast food company. For you wager name all three of these organizations, you do not need to have your answers in the correct order, but you must have all three correct. Good luck. All right, let's do it again. One on the list of the world's largest employers as measured by the number of worldwide employees. The top three American employers are a division of the U.S. government, a retail corporation, and a fast food company. Name all three of these organizations. You got 30 seconds. All right, y'all, lock it in. Big business. We're talking about three employers. You had to get them all three. Good luck. They are the U.S. Department of Defense, Walmart, and McDonald's. There you go. If you got all three of them, you're good. If you got anything less than three, you got to click the red X. Submit your scores to us now, please, in chat total score with your team name and we will see how this game plays out if there is still a tie we have a tiebreaker if for some reason you are taking off right now before the end of the game thank you so much for playing our special game tonight brought to you by alexander hamilton memorial free library please on your way out if you have not done so already consider dropping a donation in their uh, donation box by using the url or the qr code All right, we got Smarty Pants, 156, Rick James, 146, Sweet Baby James, 141, McBenchoffs hanging their heads. 
Uh, Chuck Norris 2, Electric Boogaloo 136. Killer Snails tied for first at 156. Uh oh. We got a first place, 159, Half Nelsons. Ilta's Peaches, 131. Blown Britches, 140. All about the bees. Oh, 159. So we have a tie for first. We have a tie for first. I'm really excited about this tiebreaker. <laughs> I came up with this tiebreaker la uh, last night and I emailed Kate, who's in, in the audience right here uh, in the chat. She is with the uh, library. Kate, I believe I be the, the, I'll show you the question here in a second. The tiebreaker. Um, Reminder, live stream, 7 p.m. every Wednesday. Uh, check out poorhousetrivia.com for live trivia updates. If you play live trivia. Um, private parties we do, poorhousetrivia.com. Sign up for our newsletter. And we have a tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. Very proud of this. Uh, this is between All About the Bees and Half Nelson's at 159. How many total books does the Waynesboro Library have? Kate... I believe Kate, did you go in and count ev for just for this tiebreaker? She went in and counted every book in the no, she did. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be a lot of work, I think. A lot of work. I was gonna say she counted every book just so that I uh could verify this tiebreaker. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. There's way more books than one person could count for a tiebreaker. <laughs> So for the winner of the game, closest to the number wins, this is between Half Nelsons and All About the Bees. Total books at the Waynesboro Library, the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Half Nelsons guesses 25,000. Trivia Titans says 156. That's a tie for second. Actually, we'll be third because uh, we have a tie for first right now. We're breaking the tie. All right, All About the Bees needs you to guess an answer. Half Nelson's guess is 25,000 books at the Waynesboro Library. All About the Bees says 7,000. Half Nelson says 25,000. The total books, 32,136 books. Tonight's winners, Half Nelson's take it down with the W. Congratulations to Half Nelson's for taking down the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library Trivia Night, September the 17th, 2021. Please, on your way out, everybody, I hope you had a good time. Please consider subscribing to our channel. Clicking that bell on the way out and hitting all so you receive all notifications uh, when we do something. Thank you, Kate, for putting this all together and working with us. Um, so my hat is off. My hat, I'm having a bad hair day, but the hat's still off to Kate and the fine folks over at the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. Appreciate you very much. And um, please, again, y'all, please consider on your way out. Dropping something in the old tip jar. It all goes to them. We don't, Poor House isn't taking any of these tips. All of whatever you donate goes to that QR code, goes to their site. It's all theirs. Uh, and we hope that you consider um, dropping something in their box on the way out. You know what I mean? So, support your library, specifically the Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library tonight. And uh, yes, thanks again, everybody, for hanging out tonight, spending some of your Friday evening with us here. Um, uh, <laughs> Kate says, give us billions of dollars. In fact, Sean, if you could just go ahead and drop that painting uh, off over there, I'm sure that would uh, I'm sure that would suffice, wouldn't it, Kate? <laughs> Sean can just take that painting off the old mantle, drop it off over there in the tip box there. Probably get a good 45, 50 million for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yes, if you, uh, on your way out, please consider dropping something in their box there. Um, 
a tip of any sort, you can go to their website at ahmfl.org slash trivia, or you can aim your camera with the QR code, and that'll take you to the same place, and you can go to the tip jar. And again, it all goes to the Waynesboro Library there. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for hanging out. Appreciate you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you soon. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.